Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Less Dependent Wisconsin. In today's video, we're going to talk about biochar, what it is, why it's good for your garden, and then we're actually going to make biochar in my Dakota fire pit. You don't need a whole lot of fancy equipment, just a chainsaw, a bunch of wood, a fire pit, a shovel, maybe a leaf blower. It does take a little bit of time, but it is totally worth the end result. So, quite a bit to do. Let's go get started. So what is biochar? Biochar is very similar to car charcoal. It's about 70% carbon. It's very porous, very light in weight, and it has a lot of surface area. The way we create biochar is very intense heat with limited oxygen. Biochar helps your garden by increasing water retention, helping with soil structure. It also draws metals out of the soil and decreases acidity. So if you think of like a Brita water filter or something like that, that's got a charcoal base and that's what the filter is doing. The other thing biochar helps with is the microbial properties in your garden. It's good for composting. To use this in a garden, we're going to inoculate it. That'll be the last step of the project uh, where we're going to add nutrients and beneficial organisms to the biochar to use it in our garden soil. So today we are going to be making biochar in my Dakota fire pit. If you haven't seen the video on this or know what a Dakota fire pit is, it's basically just a big hole in the ground with an offsetting air chute. Okay, but this is going to provide us enough oxygen we need to keep this fire rolling. Uh, right now I've got some old wood that I'm getting started, but the idea behind this is we are going to build a very intense hot fire in layers. Okay, and... I was cutting up wood all day yesterday, so we've got a bunch of wood to go. I'll be cutting more up too. It's gonna to take quite a bit of wood. Uh, my goal is to, if we can get at least a good five gallon bucket of quality biochar out of this, uh, we'll be doing good. So be mindful of safety. We are playing with fire, so be very careful. And we're gonna let these coals get cooking and then I'll start building the fire. The layer of coals is down, and then I've added a layer of smaller sticks to the top. We're gonna to get this really ignited with my leaf blower. this burn for a while I'm gonna work on cutting a little more wood and I'll update you if I do anything I did add a little dried bark to the top of it so this base layer is going good now we're gonna let this go for about 15 minutes and then we'll start adding our wood this is what we're looking for we want a good ash over everything it means the woods burning good and so now we're ready for the next layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pile on dried wood chunks that I cut yesterday. Now this wood is really dry. It's about two years old. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of make a nice even layer of it. Okay. You should be able to see that level of wood. We're gonna go ahead and give it just a little bit with the leaf blower. Okay. 
Okay, and we will just let that go for a while. I'm guessing it'll probably take about 45 minutes to an hour for this to burn down. And then we'll get our next level. Okay, so that's what we're kind of looking for. A nice ashy char on everything. So we're going to go ahead and pile in about six more inches of wood right now. Maybe get this thing up about halfway and then it's just going to cook for a while. Okay, so the next level of wood's been added. I'm just going to stoke it real quick with the leaf blower. is going to take a, probably a couple hours so we'll just let it go and go do some other stuff okay we're starting to get the results we want so nice hot fire ashes on everything so that's why we keep adding fresh wood to the top or dried wood rather and then there's something new to burn and that the biochar actually starts forming now and the next layer of wood's on, so we'll just let that go for a while. It's coming along very nicely. If you look closely, I can't get the camera any closer, but the biochar is starting to form. So now we are going to add some more wood. At this point in time, I also want to give a shout out to my Greenworks Pro Chainsaw. It's cut all this wood for this project. And I've gone through five batteries now, I think. So it does a really good job, cuts some pretty big logs. I've done a review on it on my channel, so check that out. Okay, I almost got it full now. So probably after this cooks down, I'll put most of the rest on the top. Still got a few hours to go. So it's been five hours since we started the whole process. And one thing I do want to tell you is I have ta been taking a shovel and breaking up some of the bigger chunks. So, but as you can see, it's breaking down real good. So we're going to throw on another layer of wood. We're getting pretty close to the end. And by pretty close, I mean another three or four hours. Okay, so that's the last of the wood that I have cut that I was intending to use for this project. So that's going to take a couple hours to burn down. And then when it burns down and it's ready for the next layer, I'm going to put these bigger logs on top. And then they're kind of sacrificial. They'll, uh, once once the everything's done, we're going to hose it down. And then those logs will just be used for another fire or something. All right, so we're seven hours in. And it is now time to put the sacrificial logs on top. What they're going to do is they're going to weigh everything down. That top layer right now is going to get a last good burning. And then in about an hour, hour and a half, we're going to come out and put the fire up. And that's it. We'll give it about an hour, hour and a half. And then we'll come and soak it down. And then we'll let it sit overnight and check it in the morning. The sacrificial logs did what they were supposed to do. We're at about the eight hour mark as far as the burn time. So now it is time to put out the fire. Okay, so the fire is completely out. Uh, there's still a little bit of residual heat coming off, but I filled it pretty much halfway with water. And there's really no smoke coming off, it's just steam. So we're just gonna let this sit overnight and then we'll come out in the morning and examine what we made.
We got the sacrificial logs pulled out and let's see how we did. Very lightweight, very porous, still a little wet, but it crumbles. So, it's not too shabby. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get this dug out and laid out on a tarp to dry out. So when you're separating out your biochar, basically if it's too big and it won't break in your hands, then it's not ready to go. Or if you break it and there is some wood that you still see, it's not ready. But for the most part, all of this is good biochar. So the last thing we need to do if we want to put this in our garden is inoculate it. And what that means is we're going to introduce nutrients through a mixture of compost tea and fish emulsion. And we'll put that in this five gallon bucket and then fill it up with the biochar. Another thing to note, this biochar is gonna get a little wet. We're in for some rain all night. So that's why I wanna go ahead and get some of this in a bucket so it's absorbing some nutrients. Okay, so I filled the five gallon bucket. Now it is soaking up all these wonderful nutrients. Uh, I'm gonna put a lid on it, put it in the back of the property by the fish emulsion. And then when I am ready to till up a garden, I can add this in there. Uh, I can put it in between rows of plants uh, slowly. So, and I've still got quite a bit left. So I've probably got closer to two and a half five gallon buckets out of this project. So uh, if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. If you are a subscriber, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Focus on being less dependent. We'll see you soon. Have a great day. Say goodbye, Melee.